Hey, the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club. What is it? Who is Audie Murphy? And why do we have a club in the first place? That's what this video is going to be all about. As we get going, that's what this channel is all about. It's all about professional development, military news, leader, you know, trying to get folks ready and prepared to, uh, for advancement, go to the board, and, and answering y'all's questions. If that's what you're into, man, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, so you can stay up to date on some future content. So uh, we're going we're gonna to break this down a little bit, talk about who Audie Murphy is, and then what the club is is and what it's supposed to be and uh and we'll, we'll get at it kind of that way so Audie murphy man uh born in 1925 um you know this is at a point in time in american history that was wrought with famine uh, coming off uh great depression hard times hard living and he was certainly not immune to it. This dude was only like, you know, just over five foot tall, right? And just skinny as a rail. Uh, siblings and uh, family, just a poor, poor family, poor up upbringing. So in less, uh, in, in 1940, right, uh, America does this crazy thing by entering into the greatest war. When I say crazy, I mean it's just I, I, I can't imagine anybody having to have lived through this. You know, Pearl Harbor on December seventh, uh, nineteen forty one, is bombed, and Americans across the United States were shocked and appalled, and they all said, "Here I am, send me." And so, what we would now consider the greatest generation hoarded in masses to enlist the Marine Corps and the Army and the Navy. And here was this young man, not even a graduate, sitting in, in, in Texas. And he's got these deep-seated emotions about what's going on, and, and he wants to be a part of it. But he's not a high school graduate. He's not even 18 years old. He's 17 years old, man. Like, I think sometimes we forget about stuff like this. You know, I think about my grandfather who fought in World War II. And maybe you have a relative who fought it. If you did and you want to share some of their experience, please feel free to share the conversation down below. 17 years old. Younger than... Everybody who's enlisting today, right? But he says, I, I need to do my part. What's going on isn't right. So he goes down to some recruiters, and they, and they all kick him back because he's 17, right? He's way too short, and he's way underweight. He weighs like a buck 20, soaking wet. The kind of dude who would fail the sprint drag carry because he doesn't have enough butt behind him to pull that sled, right? You know what I'm talking about? So finally, finally he forges some paperwork and uh, he gets he gets brought into into the army. And he goes off to basic training at this at this point in time it was in uh, Camp Walters, Texas. And then he, he ships off and he's a uh, infantryman. He ships off to North Africa, and then his unit hops up to Sicily. He's in third ID. He's a dog-faced soldier. Goes up into Italy, to France, and then to Germany. Now, I think about this sometimes because, again, you know, I think about my grandfather. He was a Marine in, in the Pacific. But similar, like, these dudes, like, they did things that were unbelievable, Over the course of just a couple years, like we deploy for six months and we complain. We deploy for nine months and we complain. We deploy for a year. We get extended out to 15 months. And most of that time is not hostile engagement and we complain, right? We have air conditioning and we complain. We have sewage and we complain. We have a defect where we can go get a hot meal and we complain. 
Well, I think about the greatest generation who didn't have any of that stuff. The hard life that they lived. Battle after battle after engagement after engagement after battle. What these dudes went, went through and their sacrifice that they made is unbelievable. And so I, for one, tip my hat to all veterans, whether they served in wartime or not, but certainly these dudes have a special place in my heart. And Audie Murphy is one of those. In fact, all along the way, you know, he, he's watching his battle buddies die, and he's rising through the ranks. Remember, this dude came in as a private, as a private. And by the time they hit Italy, he's a staff sergeant. How does that happen? Friends, that happens because everybody else around him died. Right? And before they would hit Germany, he would be a lieutenant. Again, how does that happen? It's because his lieutenant died. His best friend died right next to him. His rage fueled him to do some daring deeds to save the rest of his teammates. Charging bunkers single-handedly. Like, just a scrawny dude. Like, don't forget, he's only, like, I'm sitting down, he's only like this tall. He's like this big around. I mean, come on. The dude can barely hold a weapon. That's how small he is. But here he is doing some crazy things. In fact, he won or was awarded every medal for valor that America gives. How many is every? It's every. It's every medal for valor that America gives. And some of them multiple times. Bronze Star, Silver Star, Distinguished Service Cross, Medal of Honor. Like, that, that's crazy talk. A, we shouldn't even ask dudes to, to have to do that. But it, we did, and he answered the call. You can imagine what that did to his mindset after years of being in war. All those spots, Sicily, Italy, all up through the coast, France and into Germany, like, they're not just walking they're fighting their way to Germany. Every day, you didn't know whose turn it was going to be to die. That's what kind of life Audie Murphy lived. And before the dude is 20 years old, he's awarded the Medal for Valor. Medal of Honor, right? Man, it's just crazy. So that, that that's and then of course after the war, uh, he, he kind of ends up homeless for a little bit, and uh, he ends up out in California sleeping on a couch, and, and this dude sees him, and he gets kind of into the movie business. He starts writing some songs. Uh, he gets into in a couple uh, fights and things of this nature. You can imagine what what kind of they didn't really have a term for. Uh, PTSD at the time. You may call it battle fatigue or war fog, but you know, they certainly didn't really dig into what the impact of that is and how to deal with it. So here's this dude who lived through watching dozens and dozens of people dying and killing dozens himself, like single handedly, on top of a tank, just mowing the Nazis down. While the tank was burning, taking shrapnel in the butt. I mean, you can't make this kind of stuff up. And so the movie studio says, hey, we need to make a movie about this. It's called To Helen Back. So of course, this was made after he wrote his book, To Helen Back. Now, his grammar is not the best, so it's not like a... Uh, 
It's not like an amazing piece of literature in, in that sense. But it is that it gets you into his mind and what he experienced. And so I highly recommend the book, and I highly recommend watching the movie. And so, you know, here he is, and he's reliving, recreating all of these things, including, like I said, watching your best friend die next to you and having to relive those emotions of charging a tank and charging bunkers single-handedly. What's inside the bunker? It's a machine gun. What do you have? You have a rifle. What are you going to do? I'm going to charge it. <laughs> Hell yeah, come on. And that's what he did. And he went on to, to help some veterans and, and survivors and things of this nature. And, and then his, his legacy continued. And, and in, uh, a couple decades ago, down in Texas, uh, a group got together and they said, you know what, I, I think maybe what our army could use is an association to help build an esprit de corps within the Corps of Non-Commissioned Officers that we could get together and do some community service, right? We could get together and do some leader development. So this this association, this club was put together called the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club. And it, it's, a, um, it's a private organization that has some control by the, by the Army. But it's not an army organization, which is why when I don my uniform, I don't wear my medallion, right? That's why it's not on my uh, service record brief. That's why it's not on my uniform. But so it is a president of the boards are always, you know, everybody who's a part of the organization is all military, but it is a private organization. I, I hope that makes sense. So it's typically run at each installation runs their own club or association. Typically it's run by the senior enlisted advisor for that installation, right? They're the ones who say who does and who is not inducted at the end of the day. They're, they're the ones hold, holding as board members anyways. And then all the other senior enlisted members who are also members of the club are also part of it. I would say that less than 1% of all enlisted are members of the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club. Sometimes it's because we're too hard on ourselves. We expect perfection. Uh, but what, what it is, is that that's exactly what it is. So that's what the club is, right? It's a small group of folks who are dedicated to reaching out to the community in a professional way, representing the core of the non-commissioned officers to our community and even to ourselves, right? Doing some leader development. If it's something that you're interested in, man, I can highly encourage it because you will find a group of non-commissioned officers who takes being a leader serious. Like It is a profession. If you're just trying to... Uh, to become a member so that you can get promoted, dude, take a hike, man. Selfless service is what it's all about. So this is going to be the first in a series talking about the Audie Murphy Club. And I thought this would just be a good intro into it. Hopefully about once a week I'm going to be able to, to drop a video. And I'm going to put it into a uh, uh, its own folder, its own playlist. Sam C. So if you're interested, you can... I uh, continue to, to keep a lookout for these, and I'll, I'll drop in, you know, his bio. I'll drop in uh, how to study, how to prepare, sample questions, things of this nature. And if you have any questions, let me know down uh, in the comments below. Hope that y'all are doing well. Hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, man, smash that like button. Let's uh, keep this conversation rolling and share and invite some other folks into it as well. And until then, and that, you know what? I don't even know what the heck I'm saying anymore. Let's let's just get out of here, all right? We we got a day to get started. Ha! Come on now. You stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.